Hi, I am Dr. Nagesh. I am a consultant orthopedic surgeon. My special interest is in complex trauma, complex fracture management, arthroscopy of the knee and shoulder, and arthroplasty, especially knee and hip tracing. Post-operative care, usually again I put a shoulder immobilizer for 6 weeks in this case and gradually depending on the patient's improvement, we will improve the range of motion exercises. After 6 weeks also, we need to strengthen the rotator cuff muscles. So, full recovery let me say it takes up to 3 weeks in case of rotator cuff injury depending on the severity. When we think of a rotator cuff injury, first thing we have to understand or rule out is, is there any impingement here or is there any bursitis. This impingement and bursitis mainly are responsible for the tear in the future. Okay? So usually, clinically we assess for the impingement test and then rotator cuff stress test. If there is a pain, then we will diagnose as a rotator cuff injury and sometimes we take the help of the MRI scan to assess what is the severity of the damage or the tear. Suppose let us say it is a stage before tear happens that is called tendinosis that is inflammation and degeneration of the tendon. If it is associated with an impingement syndrome and subacromial bursitis, Okay. Let us think of that condition as the earliest stage of the degeneration. So, most common thing is rest, usually hot packs or ice packs depending on the patient's comfort, some physiotherapy, ultrasound and IFT, and some exercises, specific exercises will help in improving the situation. If the situation is not improving, usually I prefer to give a local corticosteroid injection to reduce the inflammation in the bursa here. That improves in many cities. Suppose if the acromion is hooked, that is grade 2 and grade 3 acromion and if it is associated with a bursitis and the, if the tendon is not torn yet, then the best treatment if it is not improved with physiotherapy and injection, we have, we have to go for what is called as an arthroscopy and we have to do subacromial decompression. This is a very simple procedure. Again, it is a daycare procedure, wherein what we do is, we will completely debride the tissue. Here, this is the bursa. Here, this is the bursa in between the head of the bone and the acromion. We will debride the bursa. And whatever the hooked acromion is there, we will bury it and trim it. And we will give the space for the tendon to move easily. Then, there is no chance of tear. So this is earlier to the tear we are detecting and we are improving the condition. In this state the results are good. Suppose the tear has already happened, what happens is the muscle retracts like this. Then what we do is, again we do arthroscopically, we will completely debride this and do subacromial decompression. Then we do arthroscopic suturing of this cut tendon back to this position. Okay, this is one procedure. But all said and done, if this rotator cuff tear is very mild or minimal, the results of arthroscopy are good. Though many surgeons are doing arthroscopically massive tears also, in my personal experience, I feel if the tear is very mild or minor tear, let us say less than 5 mm as an approximate estimate, I do prefer an arthroscopic suturing, otherwise what I do is I'll do a open repair. The results of open repair are very good when the tear is massive, that is more than 1 cm and up to 3 cm, 4 cm retraction, then we will do a open repair, wherein we will take an incision like this along the front of the shoulder, we will go to the part, Okay. sometimes we take the incision like this. We will go to that part, we will expose the muscle and we will repair the tail.
Usually these muscles are prone for injury. The commonest muscle that is prone for injury is the supraspinatus muscle. When we see this part of the joint, this is called the acromion. Okay, this is called the acromion and this is the head of the humerus. Okay, in this space that is below the acromion, this is called the subacromial space. Okay, in this space, this tendon of supraspinatus will run, will travel from medial and attaches to the greater tuberosity here. Okay, what happens is, whenever there is what is called as an impingement syndrome or a subacromial bursitis, what happens normally is, the head of the humerus, when we are lifting the shoulder like this, the head of the humerus goes like this in the subacromial space. Okay. If there is any inflammation in this part, that usually we call it as a bursitis, or if the head of the if the acromion is prominent and hooked like this, if it is bent like this, when the shoulder is abducted, it gets impinged, and this muscle supraspinatus is prone for injury. That is why this is the commonest injury. So, one is traumatic injury, traumatic tear usually happens with a severe force, uh, the tendon cuts here or most common is the greater tuberosity fracture. Once there is a tuberosity fracture, healing is good because always bone to bone healing is good. If there is a muscle injury, the results are not that great or not that good. The other one is a degenerative tear because of the repeated impingement. Okay. This is called rotator cuff tear, commonly is the supraspinatus tear. Okay. Again, they are graded into mild, moderate, severe, very severe grades. First, let us understand what is a rotator cuff. Rotator cuff is a muscular cuff that is surrounding the head of the humerus and will act as a protection to this head of the humerus or it acts as a stability to the shoulder joint. The four muscles comprise the rotator cuff. One is, whatever seen here is the supraspinatus. It is a key muscle in the rotator cuff which will prevent the upward displacement of the head of the humerus. Then this is the subscapularis and in the posterior is the teres major and the uh, infraspinatus. These muscles act as a protection and prevent the displacement of the head of the humerus and protect the joint.